Hey everyone, um, I, I don't know what I did to take off Rachel today. I don't know what I did, but she, she shrunk me and she, she said she, she wants to release her image in, in the live stream today. And she said she wanted to do it on the beach in her beach outfit. Um, I, uh, honey, honey, this is strange. Stop this. People are watching. People are watching. I don't know what I did to make her mad. But I did. And now, she used the shrink ray. She used the shrink ray. And, honey, you shrunk the lion heart. I hope it was worth it. I hope it was worth it to you. I hope it was worth it. Hold on, chat. She's chatting. She, she took over the Twitch account. I can't stop her. Why are you like this, Rachel? Why? Why have you done this to me? I don't understand anymore. I, what did I do to make you mad to me? I don't understand anymore. I, what did I do to make you mad to me? I don't, I don't understand. understand anymore. Baby, please. Are you being impatient right now? Are you that bad? I don't understand anymore. Baby, please. Are you being impatient right now? Are you that bad? I don't understand. Baby, please. Right now. Talk to me. Are you that bad? Don't be mad at me, okay? I don't know what I did. When you're mad like this, I don't know how to fix it. Baby, please. Talk to me. Why? Why are you mad? Why? What did I do? What did I do to serve this? Why? Oh well. You know what? Story time. I know that's what y'all are here for. Let's wait for more people to show up in chat, though. Rachel wanted her time to shine. Finally. And she grew impatient. So we're here at Casa del Sol on the beach. And well you gotta use the shrink ray. And I'm not gonna lie, these are quite soft. But it's still scary. Why? Why'd you shrink me? I don't understand. I'm a little depressed, chat. Not gonna lie. I'm a little upset. But she's not willing to talk to me. She is not willing to talk to me. Uh, 
I don't understand this anymore. Why are you like this? Why'd you shrink the lion heart? What did I do? I mean, was it a video? Was it a live stream? What? No. Oh, I know why you're mad now. I forgot our anniversary, didn't I? Jesus Christ, no, we're golden son's sake. All right, I'll make it right. I'll make it right, baby. I'll make it right. I promise I'll make it right. It's our anniversary of our first date, right? I knew it. I knew it. I, I, I guess we need to talk about it, huh? Okay, okay, that that's fair. That's fair. Okay, chat. Let's talk about oh nine and Rachel's first first date. Her first date. Chill like that. Don't no calm her down. Don't no calm her down. I know it. I know it. I know it'll calm her down. She likes it when I talk about her. She likes it. She loves it. She loves it when I talk about her. You know? Okay, you got it, babe. You got it. You got it. You got it. Well, well, we'll talk about the first date. I'll talk about the first date we ever had. It'll make you feel better. It, it makes it makes you feel nice, huh? It makes you feel important. All right, fine, fine, fine. Chat, let's get on with the story. Story time. <sighs> so, this was our first official date. After Rachel ended up joining the team, uh, we uh went we went out on date. At least like about three months. I think it was two weeks, honey. Yeah, it was two weeks. Uh, and about uh, four days in, we went on our first date. So she was like, "Surprise me," you know. You know, surprise. Make it something memorable. Make it something special. Make it something nice, you know, memorable. I go, all right, babe, all right, all right, all right. You know, we've been talking a lot. We wanted, to, we wanted to make it something more. I understand. I understand. So, uh, yeah, she loves it when I talk about her. I don't, I don't know what to tell you, chat. When, when women like to be obviously loved and adored and appreciated, and also they like to be talked about. So Rachel here and I, we went to the, uh, well, first I had to plan everything. So I thought to myself, okay, so we go out for a nice breakfast. And I thought, where would be the best place for breakfast? I was thinking, what about the universal, oh, galactic house of pancakes, galactic hops. It's Rachel's favorite place to go eat, eat pancakes in the morning. She likes pancakes, bacon, oh, dragon eggs, especially red dragon eggs. They're really spicy. She likes spicy foods. Um, and I arranged a whole private room just for me and her. And we, uh, we actually went out uh, for breakfast there. And next, what we ended up doing is obviously eat. The next plan and effort was going to the local old mall here in the North Galaxy, Ga well, in the North Galaxy Gallium Garden. We're not here, we're at Casa del Sol. Um, we went to the local Galactic Mall. There's a couple of favorite shops Rachel likes to go to. One of them is, uh, well, oh, you know, oh, Beast, Big Easter's, or, uh, you know, oh, uh, the uh, store called Spencer's, right? You know, like the place where all the golf stuff and like all the adult uh, the erotic products. Yeah, uh, Rachel has a thing for the adult old erotic toys. Uh, uh, so we decided to go to ooh, the Beasters, the Beasters uh, store. 
And she went in there, and she wanted to find something nice, you know. Like, and that's when I got her her favorite out, her favorite outside shirt that you see on her right now, her uh, beach lingerie. Uh, y'all can't exactly see it in full, but uh, yeah, we I got her her first, you know, special article of clothing. It was her lingerie, her beach lingerie, and she loved it. She loved it. And obviously, next we focused on. <laughs> oh, honey, can, people are watching. This is weird. This is not the way to resolve our issues. Uh, anyways, um, we uh, we obviously. Started to go oh, towards, obviously, the food court. There's a place in the food court that serves Rachel's favorite chocobo wings. She loves eating fresh cho fried chocobo wings. It's one of her favorite dishes. She has three of them. She likes the uh, honey barbecue chocobo wings. She also likes the extra crispy chocobo wings. With a bit of Cajun seasoning. Really nice, you know? Like Shinra, Cajun, and obviously spices. It's something, one of her favorite dishes as well from this place. This place was is called, you know, Chester's Chocobo Hut. Where obviously Chester sells Chocobo, who, uh, you know, fried food product. And, uh, yeah, so... The other one she really, really loves. I said she likes spicy foods. She likes that of the galactic <clears throat> wild atomic habanero annihilation wings. These things, like, not a lot of people can eat because, like, for y'all, it'll literally, literally turn your insides out. I mean, it literally will. It, unless you have, like, a gut made of serotonin, it'll, it'll turn your gut inside out, you know? Rachel loves it, though. She's She's got divine healing and resurrection, kind of like I do. Um, yeah. So, despite all that, uh, you know, she got her favorite chicken wings. Myself, I got my favorite uh, dish. The Chocobo Fried Chicken Sandwiches. Good stuff, good stuff. I like it with a bit of bacon, the Chocobo Mystery Sauce, and even add a bit of mayo and ketchup with lettuce. Mm, actually pretty good. Makes me hungry. Uh, baby, baby, can, can we get something to eat later? Uh, after you unshrink me, of course. Okay. She's still not talking. She's still mad. She's still mad, chat. She's still mad. I don't think she's going to talk all stream. Well, let's continue. So we ate lunch. And then, you know, I was thinking to myself, what next? Rachel says, how about a movie? I go, oh, movie. What movie you have in mind? She said, as long as it's nothing furry-based. I'm accused of being a furry, you know, because, like, I look like it, but I'm not. I'm half-human, half-like fiend. It's so insulting. I go, okay, baby. All right, what do you want to watch? Do you want to watch a comedy, a horror? She goes, no, nah, action. I go, oh, you want action and satisfaction. Which one do you want? She wanted to watch, obviously, a private filming a Blue Core Studios Mega Man the fan film. It's actually one of her favorite fan, fan films, you know? It's one of mine, too. I'm not gonna lie. Good movie. Has a couple of issues with uh, the lore, but that's because of, like, a, you know, uh, kind of the... Oh, she's looking at me again. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Not going into full analysis of the movie, honey. Got it. And so we went for a private screening in the theater. Um... Uh, you know, Rachel, she usually gets a couple of hot dogs, popcorn. She gets her favorite raspberry lemon soda. She also gets that out of her, her obviously, a favorite candy bar. 
that which is Dutch men's mint. That is a great dark Dutchman's mint candy bar. It's actually one of her favorites. Not me, I'm pretty basic, you know. Just give me like, you know, my a double Dr. P, you get that popcorn. I'm good, all right? Like, I'm pretty simple when it comes to the movie theater. But uh, <laughs> Rachel, on the other hand, she wanted something more. She said, before the movie started, I want you to win me a plushie. I go, oh, well, I can see what I can do. But then she said, no super soldier powers. I go, oh, come on. She's like, I want to see your gaming prowess. I go, okay, okay. I, I'll see what I can do. I can, I'll see what I can do. So oh, we went over there. We noticed the machine had a broken claw. She goes, looks like it's going to be kind of hard for you, huh? Yeah. Oh, which one do you want? She said, I want that one. And she pointed to the heaviest plushie in the machine. I go, you want the giant dog? The giant blue-white dog right there. The giant puppy. She goes, yes, get it. I go, I'm going to go broke today, aren't I? She goes, yes. I go, mother fricker. So I put it um, at least $10 worth of quarters or like galactic currency, you know? For y'all, like, proceed galactic currency, let's put it in uh, an understanding between Earth and C Earth dollars of American to galactic dollars. Um, a galactic dollar is worth that out of $10 US. So... Let's just say, all right, I ended up putting in over about $100 of American currency into this machine, as that's how much a galactic dollar is worth. So, yeah, it was seed like the rest of the universe. You know, it's, it's kind of sad when y'all's currency is so low, but ours is so high. Like, what the hell is wrong with you, or, or like political money system, I have no freaking clue. But anyways, anyways, uh, getting to the point. So I end up trying to overall get this uh, giant plushie. I'm literally that, because each like chance is worth like, you know, half of a galactic dollar. So I put in 10 galactic dollars, meaning I had 20 tries. So halfway in, I still can't get the plushie. I go, all right. I've been inching it little by little over and over again. I'm going like, there ain't no way I'm going to be able to get this plushie without using my powers. It's not fair. I go, so I'm going to have to do something. I'm going to have to do something. I can't use my super soldier powers. Maybe, maybe I can do something else. Something a little gamer edge. So I slowly start edging it over to the glass. Inch by inch, piece by piece, because one of the claws were broken. And eventually, I only had two tries left and was finally against the glass. I go, here goes nothing. I ended up grabbing the plushie and it picked it up. It was literally moving it, it its body across the glass with the broken claw part against the glass, meaning it secured the plushie. And then suddenly, before it dropped in, it dropped the plushie. Nani? I was like, Rachel goes, you got one more try, sweetie. Don't give up. I go, I don't want to make my girl upset. I don't want to make her mad. For Bahamut's sake, don't fail me now. Because I had one chance left, and I decided to take it. Okay, uh, chat, I decided to take it. Let me turn on some music. There, I've done this on purpose. So, in the long run, I decided to use the freaking ball. One last, I have 
one last shot. I end up doing the same procedure all over again. I grabbed it. And slowly picked up the plushie. I moved it to the hole. I got a hole one. That's right. I got her a giant puppy plushie. Jumping for joy, she was so happy, you know? See? Yeah, she's she's happy now. She's feeling better, Jack. She's feeling better. It's happier Good. Look, well, baby, I want you to be happy. I don't want you to be mad. I know you've been waiting. I know you've been waiting to show up. Okay, okay, let's continue. Let's, let's continue. So, obviously, I got the plush. And then we decided to make it to the movie. We had the party. It was almost about to start, and also the ads were just about to end. We ended up getting into our seats. We were on the top row, on the upper row shelves. We finally sat down. Start watching. And believe it or not, this is the first movie Major Lemon saw. It is her favorite. It's always been her favorite. Started watching, and there was a few characters she clicked with a lot. She loved Roll. Roll's quirky and happy personality. It made her smile and blush. She asked me, "Baby, do you think I could ever be as good and innocent as her?" I said, "No. You shouldn't really have to try to change yourself so hard. But if you want to be happy." stop you. She ends up hugging me around the neck. I felt like the luckiest guy in the world. But next, obviously, what happened then was she ended up noticing aka the Proto Man. She said, who's that? I go, that's May Man's brother, Proto Man, aka Blues. Who is the first? B.W. like me! I go, well, yeah, I mean, a Pojo did paint you, and you were the first, you know, before your twin sister, by a Vincidious. She goes, don't remind me of that thing. She looks like me, but she acts nothing like me. And, like, I go, yeah, 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 that, that, that is true, that is true. We at least got that intelligence. We haven't ran, we didn't run into this, you know, like, evil twin sister yet. We would eventually. She's mad again. She's, Jack, she's mad again. Alright. Sorry, babe. Sorry for mentioning your evil twin sister, okay? Alright? I'm sorry. Alright, let's continue. So, we end up enjoying the movie, watching the movie, and then she sees, obviously, Proto Man punch Elect Man's head off. He's, uh, that was so cool. Honey, would you punch off a villain's head for me? I go, try and freaking stop me. And she, like, blushed. She blushed. She was so happy. Okay? Like, yeah, this it's certain things like that make women happy. The next, obviously, like the next scene that really got her going, she was crying! She saw Mega Man hurt! It was the yellow devil! He crushed him! She goes, is he gonna be okay? Is he gonna be alright? Please tell me! I said, shh, 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 shh. Find out. I'm not gonna spoil the movie for you. She goes, no fancies! I go, I know, I know, but it's part of the movie. Just enjoy. She ends up finding out Mega Man's core was damaged, and his body. The body was paired with the 
something that before was beyond repair. So Dr. Light had to replace it. She goes, Honey, does human hearts work like that? I go, Not exactly. I mean, Sita has successfully made a surgery to replace human hearts, but it's very tricky, and even though it's a lot more safer compared to Earth's open heart surgeries or uh, heart replacements, at least we can uh, artificially make new hearts. We replace. It's not like replacing an energy core. He goes, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I you know I told her. And she's, uh, uh, it's next. Dr. Wiley created a clone of Mega Man or a robot cognitive uh, replacement. She goes, why did he do that? I go, well, to be fair, it's part of the original game. There was a copy machine that made a virtual copy of Mega Man. You know, and, and, and the, she noticed, she, he, he just kidnapped Roll. Why he kidnapped Roll? Wait a minute, and it, is that the copy or the real thing? I said, nah, nah, it's the copy, babe. And Mega Man, uh, the copy Mega Man ended up kidnapping Roll. Then she seen how Dr. Wily treated her. He goes, Reminds me of my daddy and how you have me. I go, I'm sorry. He goes, I want to feel better. I said, I'll make you feel better, I promise. Let's watch the movie. He says, is there a good ending? I said, oh, it's beautiful. Maybe one day we'll actually watch it on live stream chat. Two Core Studios Mega Man is actually a good movie along with that. <laughs> I will mention, like, it is copyright free. A lot of VTubers don't know what's copyright free and copyright, so let's continue. She's feeling better. She's feeling better. Okay, that's good. That's good. All right, so let's continue. Um, by the e battle scene between Dr. Wadley and Mega Man, she goes, that's a charge shot, kind of like your cannon and your second fire sequence. I go, well, my cannon's second fire sequence is a lot more powerful than Mega Man's charge shot, but I can see where it's coming from. He goes, yeah. I go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know? And I'm like, oh, now she's getting real excited. She loves it. She loves it, chat. Okay, let's continue. So, yeah. Obviously, she kept watching the movie, and then she finally notices Dr. Wily escaping. She goes like, no, no, mate, man, don't let him escape. Don't let him get away. Where's the cops? Where's the police? Where's the military? Why haven't they stopped Dr. Wily? And I said, Dr. Wily has far more advanced technology and robotics, Rachel. Normal military wasn't going to handle his robot masters that and he literally reprogrammed. She goes, that's not fair. That's not fair. Why is he going to get away? I go, just watch. She eventually says, oh, the Wily capsule breaks down fault the engineering if you ask me. But yeah, Dr. Wily bails from the Wily capsule, and here comes Mega Man. Rachel goes, Justice! I go, wow, you are really into this, holy crap. And she was so excited. See, she's happy now, she's getting happier. Okay, she's getting happier. Alright, and eventually, like, holy crap, in the long run, Dr. Wily gets arrested and took in the jail. Rachel then asked me, is there going to be a second movie? I said, there was supposed to be a second and a third, but due to Capcom interfering with, like, Blue Force Studios productions, and they want to do their own variants of the movies, the movies were canceled. But there is a musician group that actually continued on the work. She goes, What's the musician? I want to listen to the music. I go, oh, they got a humdinger of a song on this one. But they repurpose it, uh, obviously, uh, down the line. He goes, 
they sung the music in this movie? I go, yeah, at least one of the songs. And they made an entire overall cabinet from Megan and Entertain Nintendo Entertainment, better known as Mega Man 1's cabinet. They did Mega Man 2, Mega Man 3, and they did one song to Mega Man 4. She then asked, why? Why did they stop doing Mega Man music? I said, they just got tired of it, or maybe there was some copyright reason for Capcom. I don't know. Maybe there was something else. They eventually started doing something called the Megas X Belmonts. She goes, what's the Belmonts? I said, we're going to have to check out all of one of the Belmont animes on Netflix later. She goes, wait a minute. There's a Belmont anime? I go, yeah, it's actually pretty dope. At least the like, first one. As far as I know. You know? She goes, can we watch it at, uh, at, at, at the house later? I go, hmm, sure, why not? See, that made her happier. That made her happier. She's getting happier, chat. Let's make her happier, okay? So she can really you revert me back to normal size later. Alright, let's continue. So, obviously... We then decided to go to a local park, but not just any park. We decided to go to the local, oh, oh, obviously, Grand Fair Park. There is a Grand Fair Night Park, a Morning Park, and Afternoon Park. Um, imagine it kind of like something like Universal Studios, but more of a, like, a Universal Studios with, uh, obviously, what was it again? Six Flags connected. You know, like, kind of like Six Flags Universal Studios. Of these parks, there's a morning edition, there's an evening edition, and then there's a night edition. We he went to the night edition, and she said, first thing I want, I want on to go on a roller coaster. I go, roller coaster? She goes, yeah, I'm roller coaster ride. But not just anyone. A scary one. I go, scary roller coaster ride. Well, I'm not one for roller coasters, but we'll see what we can do. So I decided to get one of those tall, less roller coaster rides ever. And luckily, there's a VIP section for Sea Galactic Mercenaries in the top 10 ranks. We actually get, uh, you know, <laughs> special privileges because we're some of the top. I guess we need to mention later, like, oh, how do we improve our ranks? <laughs> that, that's a video for another day or live stream. So, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Rachel, people are watching. Why are you so upset? I don't know what I did. A anyways, anyways, um, yeah, so, uh, we end up watching everything, being in the movie theater, and then we went to the roller coaster. First thing that happened, we got on the roller coaster. Now, this roller coaster is very that of a 15-minute long ride of loops, curves, turns, literally, obviously, loop-de-loops, and a couple of tunnels. And it goes by really quick. It is known as the Mercenary's Terror. Roller coaster. And, like, she, I said, this is not only one of the biggest, but one of the scariest. You ready for this stuff? She goes, please, if I can make you a talking torso, or in half a head, I think I can take a couple of the or a roller coaster ride. I go, oh, okay. Now you asked for it, not me. So she's like, I can take it. I go. <laughs> so we end up on the, going on the roller coaster ride. Two minutes in, we enter the first cave. And right then and there, she sees a zombie ball on it. She freaks the frick out. She goes, why is the uh, Guardian Force the giant zombie? I go, calm down, it's just an animatronic. 
but then she starts saying the ghosts of the other guardian force, Shiva, Quetzalt, all of them flying around. She's freaking out, and she hugs me out of fear. I'm like, babe, babe, they're, they're just illusions. It's a gimmick. They're not real. And like, she hugs me, and she's like, are you sure? We get out of the first cave. Then we start going a little bit more faster, and we start going up, down, twisted around. We literally hit our first loop to loop, and she goes, woohoo! And literally loops us back down, where we literally we go through that of a hologram of slime, or better known as ectoplasm. <laughs> She's like, Ah! I'm like, relax, it's not real ectoplasm, it's just a hologram. She goes, oh, it has no smell to it. I said, not done. <laughs> so, like, we end up going through the next part as it's the next cave. First cave is the cave of dead GFs. The second cave is the cave of dead heroes. Obviously, this is where, like, all summons heroes, and even uh, the minutes of people are dead on this ride. You see the heroes of the past. Lightning, Cloud, obviously e e Leon. You see all of them undead uh, beings. She's freaking the fuck out. Oh, then she's realizing, oh, this is scary. Why are they, why, why do they have flesh exposed? Why does it look so rotten? What the heck is going on? I go, babe, babe, it's makeup. It's makeup. It's make believe. It's not real. They're not really dead. Calm down. Calm down. You know? It's just atmosphere. It's just makeup. Special effects. Calm down. This, this is a scary ride. I get it. I get it. I get it. Eventually, we get past the, obviously, cave hall of the heroic dead. And we started going through loop-de-loops again for the next, obviously, four minutes, until we hit the final cave. In the final cave, you see the innocent civilians that have also been zombified. And their ghosts looming around, obviously, or working for a villain. Known as the Four Eater King, the Undead. And yeah, we end up getting out of there. She's like, I don't want to do that ever again. That's creepy right now. Eventually, she would find out oh, that she loved it. But she said, I want to go so um other ride. Something, something more romantic. Something to cheer me up. I don't want to freak out anymore. I go, what about the tunnel of love? He goes, tunnel of love. Wait a minute, there's a tunnel of love here? I go, oh yeah. This is obviously where, where she got to uh, feel better. As I took her to the tunnel of love, and please, uh, please overall forgive me when I make this pun, but the tunnel of love made her feel love. See, she's happy. She's happy. She's happy, Jack. She's happy. She loves it. She. She loves it when I talk about it. All right? See, she's happy. Let's continue. All right, so the tunnel of love, this is where obviously halfway through, Rachel touches my hand. She puts her hand on my shoulder. She said, I want to remember this moment forever. Well, because of our healing factors, we live a long time, aren't we? Then I go, you went, yeah, babe, yeah. You and me forever. I go, oh. You made me feel so happy. I almost cried. And obviously, when it was almost said and done, we entered the glass part, where obviously the Cupids were. The virtual arrows of love. That's what Rachel did again. He gave me a kiss. Lips. That's right, Jim. We had our first kiss in the tunnel of love. And 
that was something special. Soon that out of the tunnel wall, but it wasn't just any kiss. It was what was known as a French kiss. Do you know what a French kiss is, chap? Let me put it into you simply. It's when two lovers kiss and intertwine their tongues in the form of a Kama Sutra together. Obviously, he's showing romantic feelings. Some women actually don't like that anymore. But Rachel did. And he goes, what was that? I go, wow, that kiss? Well, the French kiss. He goes, what's a French kiss? And I told her that she said, I like it. I go, oh. We'll say hey, the rest of it for later. So I decided to take her for ice cream. Now there's a unique ice cream place that has more than over 700 different flavors of ice cream and sherbet at this park. 700 flavors. And Rachel will ask me, what's the one I'm going to get? I'm going to go, I went basically simple, cookies and cream, my favorite. She goes, I want to try the, uh, ooh, chocolate chip cheesecake ice cream. I go, all right. And then she said, along with sprinkles, whipped cream, a cherry up top, hot fudge, nuts, and even that of sugary sprinkles as well as long the regular sprinkles. I go, whoa, -ho -ho! someone's got a sweet tooth tonight. She goes, yeah, I've never had ice cream before, so this is going to be my first time. I go, babe, babe, I hear you, I hear you. And she, she literally got it. And she's like, how many scoops can I get? I go, well... I mean, how many do you want? She goes, I want a lot. I go, how about four scoops? He goes, is that a lot? I go, eh, it should be enough. We don't want to get you sick. You know, on ice cream, give you an ice cream headache. He goes, what's an ice cream headache? I go, oh, my sweet, 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 simple, oh, darling. What an ice cream headache is. I don't want you to expect it. It'll be bad. But just four scoops should be enough. He goes, how many you're going to get? I'm going to go, I went, obviously, with at least about two. With crushed Oreos, whipped cream, regular sprinkles, and then a hot fudge myself. <laughs> and it's all dipped in a Rishi Reese's shell. Real nice stuff, actually. Real nice stuff. Good ice cream treat for obviously a good, obviously, group of lovers. So we end up eating the ice cream. And literally, three scoops in, Rachel starts holding her head. She goes, Oh, what is this sensation? I go, Oh, that's the ice cream headache. You ate too fast, didn't you? She goes, There's a thing about eating too fast? I go, Babe, babe, yes, ice cream is cold, it gives you a headache too fast. She goes, I hate it, but I love the flavor. I said, okay, okay, why don't you take a drink of that hot cocoa there? I got you. It was really calm the, um, the cold. The head, the, you know, the ice cream headache. He goes, fine, fine, fine. He ends up taking a few sips of the hot cocoa, and she, he starts eating the ice cream again. This place not only serves ice cream, but hot cocoa, just in case you get an ice cream headache. So, yeah, she ends up eating the whole ice cream. Then she says, what about this? What is this? I said, that's the cone. She goes, can you eat the cone? I said, yeah, it's, you can eat the cone. Some people see it as weird, but it, it's basically edible styrofoam. She goes, is it good? I go, it's good with ice cream in it, yes. She goes, um, basically. She ate the cone. He goes, but what it tastes better with ice cream? Yep. Maybe we'll get you the sugar cone next time. Maybe that would be better. He goes, 
there's a sugar cone. I go, yeah, next time. He goes, okay. Next, obviously, we decided to go back to the house. I go, oh, up, up, I'm gonna, uh, I said to her, well, honey, I, I'm gonna go to my bedroom. Good night. He goes, I don't want to sleep alone tonight. I go, what do you mean? We just had our first date. And if anything, I don't want to be alone because the scary overall. Oh, like, ride you. I decided to go on. I go, oh, baby, you want to sleep with me? He goes, yes. No, you see, that made her happy. It made her happy. Talking about sweet things like this make women happy. So, we slept together in my bed. In my bedroom, of course. Of course, I made sure to take a bath first. But she's like, Can I take a bath with you? I go, What? Oh, um, we just went out on first date. You sure you're okay with that? He goes, You don't love me? I go, No, 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 babe, no, babe, no, babe. I just really don't have that big of a bathtub in this one. She goes, I don't care. I go, all right, all right, we'll take a bath again. Just allow me some time to prep the bath. I like really hot bath water. She goes, okay, I do too. And we end up taking a bath together. You know, I wash her back, she washes mine. You know, obviously all that kind of stuff. It was real nice, real fun. I, she loved it. She loved it, chap. See, she, she's happy. She's happy. She's happy. She's really happy now. She's getting in a better mood, chap. She's getting in a better mood. I think this is going to work. All right. So, we soon obviously started going to bed. She's like, I want some romantic music. I said, what kind of music you want? She goes, uh, something memorable? with no lyrics. I go, I got just the song. And this is the song I played. Yeah, it's like, it's a good one, Chad. It's a good one. Which one? Where, where is it? Where is it? Started playing this one. A rendition. Yule. Yeah. He goes, this is a beautiful song. Started from hearing the first, first, first notes. She's like, I want to fall asleep with you. Fall asleep with this with you while holding you. I go, Okay. So we end up obviously going to sleep together that night. And in the morning came, you know, you hear the alarm going, eh, 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 eh. Rachel goes, what's that noise? She ends up uh, waking up, pulling out her gun and blowing up the alarm clock. I just go, babe, that was my alarm clock. She goes, sorry, I'll get you a new one. I go, not a morning person, are you? She goes, not really. I go, yeah, go, go, go figure, go figure. She did eventually replace the alarm clock. Yeah, yeah, I feel you, babe. I feel you. So obviously, I would be replaced her alarm clock eventually on her next paycheck. But uh, yeah, so that was our first date. But well, the morning wasn't over because as soon as morning came, in comes Grandpa uh, Kramer. You know, Sid Kramer. He walks in and he goes, ah. Oh, Devin, where are you? Are you okay? I heard you took Rachel on your first date last night. He goes, he goes, hi. He goes, I'll give you your place. He slowly closes the door and just locks the door. <laughs> My grandpa cares about me a lot. So, yeah, uh, Grandpa said, good man, good man. 
he knows when lovers get together, you know, it's private time. So that was our, me and Rachel's first date. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot, a lot of fun. She loved it too, didn't you, babe? Yeah, I know you did. I know you did. You love it when I talk about you. You love it. Chat, to make a woman happy, all you have to do is sometimes talk about all, you know, the good times y'all had together. Uh, and, and anyways, what else you want me to talk about, sweetie? Oh, okay. Wait a minute, I think I know where you're getting at. She's still a little bit upset, chat. So I think we should talk about one of her first greatest victories. <laughs> it was during the War of Mad Science. It's when she fought Daddy Dearest. Um, but it was, that wasn't her first great victory. Her first great victory came against, well, uh, a robotic duplicate of me. And here's the thing. He tried to come off like, Rachel, you need to come home. You know, everyone's afraid. They're worried about you. And the battle went down. She eventually ends up uh, destroying the robot. And one of her famous quotes was, You don't even have the scent of his power and potential. I can smell power. You have no power. And the robot went, and then it exploded. Because it tried to say something, but the jawline was completely destroyed. Let it be known, you never make your woman mad, especially a seven foot, uh, a one inch woman that was biologically engineered to kill. I am not kidding on that. That's how Hojo made her. And what purpose for? Backfired, though. Eventually, she would make it at Hojo's fortress before us. As Hojo was the last scientist standing. She finally confronted Daddy Dearest. Rachel entered in. Said, Father, we need to talk. Rachel was like, Ah, Rachel, so you come prowling back. It's a long time. Did you get tired? Man thing. Man thing. for a boy for a while. He was like, he's not a man thing. He's my man thing. And I want your permission to marry him. And Hojo was like, Ah, you are a failure. A hopeless failure of an experiment! Rachel was like, he was right. You never wanted a daughter. You just wanted a war machine. Hojo is like, well, is that so bad? You were supposed to be a killing machine for war. But instead, you overall became a simp for somebody with a greater power level than anyone in the universe. It's not my fault that you have these emotions and these feelings wanting to love and accept the strongest being ever to exist. Rachel goes, I don't care what you say anymore. I'm just going to kill you. See, that made her happy. It's making her happier. So, she ended up fighting Daddy Dearest. First, it was Hojo, oh, it, you know, like, kind of like an Iron Man suit. Sadly, Hojo's Iron Man suit was a dollar short knockoff. Uh, see, that made her happy. Then, next, obviously, Hojo decided to do, like, oh, a bigger suit. He's like, ah, luckily I always have. Back up plans. You thought this was the real me? As it was a hologram of the real Hojo. 
Rachel was like, I knew you were a coward, but not this much of a coward, father. And then, obviously, the entire building started to shake. She found out that Hojo's lab was a giant mechanical robot fortress. But not just any robot fortress. One equivalent to that of a Gundam. But not just any Gundam. No, 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 no. You're thinking like maybe a Zaku or maybe a regular size one. No, this one was the size of a Power Rangers Megazord. And I'm not talking about your average Megazord. No, 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 no. I'm talking about a Super Megazord. Like the Super Train Megazord. Or something like that. It was that huge. Rachel ended up jumping out of the building. Before it fully transformed, she realized, I'm in over my head here. Why didn't I tell them where they went? Where I went? Why didn't I call for backup? I'm a fool. Then, her savior came, and the rest of the team, me, Kai, McGretta, Joey, Iris, Geo. at the time Ashi wasn't part of the team, we all came to a fight by her side. I said, hey babe, miss me? He goes, I'm so sorry. I go, I understand. You wanted to prove yourself. You wanted to show that you could stand on your own and take care of your own problems. Sometimes we all want to do that. Sometimes even we admit we need help. You should never be so prideful when, you're, when you don't ask for help. Because sometimes people just need help rather than succeed as a content creator or that in a battle, or even in life. I myself, time and time again, have found out that no matter how prideful you are, even the most strongest of individuals need help. And Rachel learned her first big lesson. Sometimes you need help from others to succeed. You can never do everything on your own. Ain't that right, sweetie? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. See, she's happy, chat. So eventually we took on the giant Megazor knockoff, Gundam knockoff. We first started focusing around the ankle area, as the energy cores and the ankles are obviously exposed. The fortress wasn't fully completed. Eventually, we disabled the joints and the mech from the ankles could no longer move around the ankles, so it was stationary. Oh, FYI, this battle was taking place. A song, Shira, by the way. So, this giant mech was now just a little bit crippled. So, what we had to focus now, as it literally fell to one knee, started attacking the knees. We started focusing in two teams. Teams of three. There was me, Rachel, Ongio, Lucretta, Kai, and Iris. We eventually end up taking down the knees and making the other knee malfunction as well. Where it's now uh, literally sitting on the ground with the knees and legs underneath it. It's now crippled. At least about 35% crippled. We started focusing on the waist joints. And the waist joints eventually, 30 minutes in, literally started the malfunction and, and obviously stopped working. So their weapon functions and capabilities stopped work working as well. We then started focusing going to the arms. Both of our teams focused on the hands. The hands had multiple weapons, missiles, rocket launchers, flamethrower in one finger, got uh, multiple missiles in another. You have to add a little giant rocket in another finger. You have uh, that of a laser gun in the thumbs. And then in the pinky, well, please forgive me. 
and had a, a giant seismic nuclear missiles inside. So we had to take out the pinkies first. The pinkies had the most danger. We ended up destroying the fingers and that of the hand joints and then we started focusing on the elbows. The elbow joints were really revolved around it, the mech's overall all tough exterior defenses mechanisms as the defense protocols were found in the elbows. We ended up defeating the elbows and started focusing on the chest region. The elbows took at least about a good 20 minutes. Chest region, we started attacking the chest as region 4. As this is where the mech got most of its power and it was at its most vulnerable. Hojo was like, ah! You blasted seed! Why are you always trying to protect the universe? Why are you always foiling my plans? You're just like Finn, just like Cloud, just like Barrett, just like Tifa, just like all of them. Why can't y'all ever let me win? Rachel realized, it's just like Dr. Wiley. I go, darling, you have no freaking clue, do you? That's how evil scientists are. Yeah, I know, right, Ben? Anyways, anyways, let's continue. So, obviously, we started continuing to hit the core. Eventually, the core started to malfunction, and it literally started to shut down all functions. But the battle wasn't over. We had to go up to the head region, because the head region was literally going into overload. This is where the core was unable to sustain itself as the cooling mechanisms were found in the head. We started attacking the head region and eventually a 20 minutes and 23 minutes, two seconds and, and 10 kiloseconds later, we end up defeating the head. And then eventually all parts cease to function and we end up defeating the mech. All systems were shut down. But Hojo wasn't done. There was a round three. He's like, ah, can't believe it. My greatest overall robotic creation defeated. Why? I go, Hojo, you have no idea what uh, uh, you've just done. He goes, I don't care. I'm going to win this. You may have defeated the other scientists of the Foundation of Mad Science, but I was already planning that to overthrow them and take the universe for myself. I go, wow. Well, looks like somebody is more than a Dr. Wily, but more than a Dr. Evil with a Dr. Wily and the Dr. Claw put all together. He goes, I don't know what those are. I go, you poor soul. And a lot of my jokes went over the head of the others, but Rachel actually got these because she was watching these shows with me. Ain't that right, babe? Yeah, I know, right? I know, I know. You're happy. You're happy. So, obviously, she laughed. She goes, well, was, let's just finally put Hojo away. I go, fair enough. And he goes, you weren't made to blush. You weren't made to love. You weren't made to feel. You were made to kill. What happened? She go, she went, I evolved and changed as not only seed, but as a woman. Because maybe you were my greatest creation. But you may be my greatest creation, but you're also my greatest failure! I go, Rachel, why don't you leave this one to me? He goes, Ha! And what you're gonna do? Whack me with that giant sword? I go, Why waste my sword on such a tiny little man? What? I ended up busting out my cannon. My, uh, technically it's not a cannon, it's a solar 
ion plasma fusion for, or rifle. I go, Rachel, I'll have you make the choice. Do you want to have me hit him with a regular bolt, a charge shot, or even that of a massive concussive energy blast? Rachel goes, make it hard. I go, babe, you wish it, I dish it. See, she's getting happier, Chad. She's getting happier. She's happier. So, yeah, I go, you wish it, I dish it. I ended up activating the charge shot function for the first time. And I ended up blasting him into oblivion. See, she's happier. Happier. I'm, we're making her happier. Anyways. Like, okay. So, yeah. That's how the battle... Uh, the last battle of Mad Scientist came to a close. Our first major war arc, and Rachel's great major win. This war was Rachel's war. And she was ecstatic. But at the same time, she was sad. She wished her dad could see her as more of a success than a success and a failure. She also wanted daddy's permission. What girl wouldn't want daddy's permission? Ain't that right, sweetie? Yeah, I know, I know. Anyways, so with that all mentioned, now let's continue. I think it's finally working. I may be able to get taller later. If she wants me to be. Now. Uh, with this now I'll mention. What do you want next, Rachel? You forgive me? Oh, wait a minute, what? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, chat. I'm sorry, the stream's gonna have to come to a close. Oh, uh, uh, Rachel wants to snooze Tuesdays. I think we can go oh, back to our beach apartment slash loft and uh. Will you make me bigger? I I don't want a tiny tiki. Thank you. Chat, thank you so much for helping me work things out with Rachel right now. I really appreciate it. You know? Like, sometimes just talking about uh, what we've been through, you know, and the good times, the bad times, really does help out understand um, things. Ain't that right, Rachel? Yeah, exactly, exactly, Rachel. Alright, thank y'all so much for joining us here on the live stream. Um, Rachel, like, before we go, can you use the ray gun to make me taller? Thank you, thank you. Alright, chat, I guess we're gonna have Snoo Snoo Tuesdays a little early, and I'll come back later on in the morning with the live stream of gameplay for all of you. Thank you so much for joining us here on this, you know, we're just overall story time, late night story time between, you know, you, me, Rachel, and, you know, making her feel better. Thank you so much. I've been Commander Devin Lightheart. This has been Rachel, and we'll see y'all in the next one. We're cutting off transmission.